Hi, in today's video we'll be discussing arguably the most important tool for land navigation, maps. In this video and the next, we'll be examining how we can use maps in the planning phase of our adventures. We're going to learn that different kinds of maps have different purposes. Today we'll be looking at street maps, satellite imagery, and topographic maps. Stay tuned. Maps are geographic representations of the real world. There are different kinds of maps. Maps can show us all kinds of different information. For our purposes, we'll be focusing on geographic reference maps, maps that show us where we are or will be in relation to geographic features. Let's take a look at two basic geographic reference maps, and I mean basic, the mall map and the theme park map. These maps help you figure out where you are and all the places you might want to visit. These maps are designed to help with the specific purpose of enhancing the visitor's experience. The mall map's job is to get you into the right store where you'll find what you need and buy it, or give you ideas of other shops where you can go and find all of the things you didn't even know you need. Then there's the theme park map. Its function is to represent a fun and happy place. It will have colorful graphics and show you attractions relative to one another, but these maps certainly are not accurate with regard to direction and scale. Today we'll cover three types of maps you can use to enhance your outdoor adventure. Now, long before you get in your car and drive. Hi, I'm John with Let's Go Now Adventures, and whether you're into tent camping or RV camping, we create videos to help you have a better camping experience. Before we dive in, it's important to note that all flat maps are flawed. Anytime you try to represent the surface of a sphere, like our planet, onto a flat surface, there's going to be distortions. On this flat map, the way, is mo the way it's most commonly projected, the land masses at the top and the bottom appear much larger than they really are. A globe is really the only accurate map of the Earth. For us, though, at the distances we'll cover in our outdoor adventures, the scale is small enough that the distortion caused by projecting a curved surface to a flat surface is manageable. The three types of maps that are useful to outdoor adventures are street maps, satellite images, and topographic maps. Let's use this demonstration to show the strengths and weaknesses of each of these three types of maps. So here we have a street map. This is really good about representing roads and streets. Here's a street map that doesn't have any roads or streets on it. It doesn't help us much. A satellite image will help to fill in some of the gaps, but this topographic map really does provide us with much more information and will really be much more of an assist to us when we actually do go on our adventure. Next, we use Google Earth to kind of fill in the details to take a look at it in advance of what we're to expect when we finally do take our trip, get out there and experience nature, see with our own eyes, and truly wonder as we go on our own adventures. So today we're all going to take an adventure. Today I'm going to walk you through these three styles of maps to plan a trip to a very popular national park and to take a signature hike in that park. The park is Zion National Park and the hike is Angel's Landing. We're going to use these maps to plan and preview our adventure. So let's get started. Now we're going to start our journey in a major city and let's just call it Las Vegas, Nevada. And we'll go from Las Vegas using street maps all the way up to Zion National Park in Utah. So let's start our journey. Here we are, I've already got Google Maps pulled up. On the thing, we'll just zoom in a little bit here. Here is Las Vegas. And this is I-15 heading north. We'll zoom out a little bit. And right over here is Zion National Park. 
So heading, we'll use the map. Now we could always go up here into the corner and we could type in um, our dest our starting point and our end point and Google Maps will give us the route it chooses. But remember, what we're doing now is we're trying to get better at land navigation. So what I'd like you to do is for this exercise is to plot your own course. So what we'll do is we'll just travel up I-15. We'll go through the city of St. George. And right here, there's a turnoff going to Hurricane, Utah. And I did say that correctly. And we'll turn up to Laverkin here. And we're going to take this little tiny Highway 9. And we're going to head to the to the east on Highway 9. We'll follow that along. And we're going to come up to this town right here, Springdale. So Springdale right here is the gateway city to Zion National Park. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come up. And it looks like we have a split right here in the road. So we're going to take the split that goes off to the left. And we're going to come up here right to this place. The Grotto Picnic Area is where we're going to start our hike. And I'm just going to move that down a little bit. You can even see, maybe you can, that our hike has already been laid out for us. So Google Maps has done a really good job of showing us roads all the way to this point. They've even gone so far as to include the hike to the top of Angel's Landing right there. Now what we'll do is Google Maps has gotten us so far. So a street map is really good if we're just trying to get from one city to the next city or a city to a trailhead so that we can start a hike. But really, you can see that as we trace the line of our trail, we really don't have much information about what kind of hike that's going to be. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go over into USGS, and I'm going to be typing out, and you'll see on your screen, the URLs I use to get to top of you. Or we'll go here and go to top of you. Now here's Utah, so we know our destination's there. So we're going to just kind of zoom in a little bit. And from our Google Maps, we know that we passed the city of St. George. And we came over here through the city of Hurricane. There's Laverkin. We're just following the same roads that we did using Google Maps. So here in the center is Springdale. And then as we come up, we're going to go take this one fork in the road and if we look over here on the far side we have the option of hitting 24k what this is is this is the resolution of the map that we're looking for 1 to 24000 is a scale and what that means is that for every one inch on the map is 24,000 inches in real life. And since we're hiking, we're going to want the closest or the most zoomed in scale that we can get. And over here, it has a list of all of the different versions of the Temple of Sinawava maps. So I'm going to just click on the Utah one, let me just move this screen a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Right here is this Temple of Sinawava. And we can do a couple things. So right now I'm just going to hit show. And then this is what you get. You've got your full topographic map. Now if you actually purchase this map, it would be pretty big. It would be about 18 inches by 2.5 feet, 2 feet. And so it's, it's pretty big and very usable. 
Now, stay tuned next week. We're going to be going into a lot more detail. It'll be a deep dive into the topographic map. We'll be showing you not only where you can find them, both for free and for purchase, but um, how to really interpret them. Today, I'm just going to be giving you a brief overview to kind of point out how much more information is contained in a, top, a topographic map. So moving on, down at the very bottom, you'll find on the left side bottom, there is just basically information about when the maps, um, the data was collected, when it was put into the map. Next to that is a very, very important thing, and we'll be covering this in much more detail, which is the magnetic declination. And just suffice it to say that there are three Norths. And in this case, um, the little arrows are pointing to three different Norths. There's a grid North, there's a magnetic North, and there's a true North. Um, for our purposes in this series, we're only worried about one North right now, and that is true North. The next part, if we scroll along the bottom, is the scale. So it'll allow you to know that for each segment of the map, you can use this scale to convert that either into kilometers or meters. The other thing that I want to really point out is this part right down here in the middle, kind of below the middle, which is the contour interval of 80 feet. What that's saying to us is that all those contour lines are separated by 80 feet of elevation. It's important to know that because as you travel, you're going to be gaining or decreasing elevation by 80 feet between each of those lines. I have an example for that in just a minute. Coming across the bottom, now the last section is going to be over here. This um, picture of the state of Utah and with a red square down at the bottom is showing you where this map is in relation to the state of Utah. The graphic right below that is showing where this map is and then telling you, just to the right of that, the map names of the seven and a half minute or, or 24,000 K maps that are adjacent to it. So like for example, number one is adjacent to it to the upper left and that's Kolob Reservoir. Directly above it would be Cogswell Point. Those are the names of the other maps that are right next to it should you need to pick up those maps. And then we have in the next section we have our road classification. So it'll tell you about roads, um, interstate, state roads, and uh, give you some the legend for expressways are in red, but a local connector road is just in gray. And a four-wheel drive road is in dotted. Same with the trail. Our hike laid out, you can see the dotted lines. What I've done is I've gone ahead and put highlighter over those to make it a little bit easier to see. Now there's one section of this and we're going to use this as an example that has some switchbacks climbing up the side of a hill. So you can see that each of these lines is 80 feet as we climb up this hill. So here we go as we get to the first one you can see there's a difference of 80 feet between those two. As we climb to the next, it will now up to 160 feet. The next is 240, and then 320 feet. So in a very short amount of time on this hike, we're going to cover 320 feet of vertical elevation. That just gives you way more information. If you remember back to when we were looking at Google Maps, the trail was marked, yes, but it was a flat representation of the trail. So by looking at a topographic map, we get a better idea, much more information about what the nature of our hike is going to be like. So for example, during this one stretch of hike, we're going to be covering 320 feet in elevation. So now we're going to go to Google Earth and 
Google Earth is an awesome tool to even take your journey or create a mental picture that's in combined with the street map, combined with the topographic map. Now we're going to use the power of Google Earth, which is available to anybody. All you have to do is go to earth.google.com to access Google Earth. And as we get into Google Earth, you'll see here we have a satellite view, slightly tipped, of our trailhead. Right there in the center is where we're going to be starting our journey. And there it is. Our destination is the very tip of that. That is the top of Angel's Landing. So as we continue our journey, we're going to follow along on the trail right here. And now you can see we're up to those switchbacks. And you can see now that 320 feet, now that even means more to you, is that you're climbing up the side of a cliff. Then what it looks like is the elevation gain is going to get much more mild as you climb back into this canyon. This canyon is called Refrigerator Canyon. And you're going to work your way towards the back of that. And as you go along, if you look very carefully along your right, you can see a diagonal line coming right up the side of the cliff there. Well, let me just flip around, and now you can see what's going on there. Yes, we've got more switchbacks as we climb up another cliff. Then we're going to get up near the top of that, and we're now up to what's called Scouts Point. This is Angel's Landing, and you can see here, our, we are going to be climbing basically the spine of this right up to the top. And we'll be finishing our hike at the very summit of this sandstone formation called Angel's Landing. And from here, if you've made it this far, if you have the stomach for heights, and you're careful, you're greeted with stunning views of Zion National Park. First, before you go, use these three types of maps to preview and plan your journey, just like we did today. Use a paper map to go over your driving route to your destination. Pre-plan your backcountry segment on a topographic map. Use Google Earth to fly through your adventure and help fill in the blanks and build a mental picture of your journey. Second, employ some sort of redundancy. What I mean is, have the paper versions of the maps for your journey with you, as well as the electronic versions that you'll use in your cell phone and GPS. An example, I have electronic versions of the maps for the two big adventures I have for this summer on my cell phone and GPS but I'll also be carrying the paper maps. I think of the paper maps as the primary reference with the electronic version as the backup. For me, it just feels more natural to use a big map to represent big spaces I'm going to be exploring versus looking at a 3-inch or 5-inch screen on my devices. And third, when you get back, review your trip on your maps. Make notes, mark your waypoints, points of interest that you discovered along the way. You can also attach photos to your maps at the point that the photo was taken. You know, I believe the best parts of an adventure are on the journey, sometimes even more than the destination. A topographic map is the type of map you'll want in the backcountry. It will be the most useful and have the most information that you can use when you explore off the beaten path. Next time, I'll be showing you where you can obtain these topographic maps for both purchase and for free. And we'll be using the USGS Map Store and a very useful app called CalTopo. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell right next to it and select all notifications so you'll be notified when we release the next episode in our basic land navigation series and all of our outdoor and camping related videos. I'm John with Let's Go Now Adventures, and I hope you found value in this video. If you did, please hit the like button. It really does help. Have fun navigating, and I'll see you 
on the next adventure.